All right, everybody, here it is. Our lab in which we are calculating and determining the concentration of an unknown strong acid. We're going to be using sodium hydroxide against mystery strong acid. Now, with that said, we know that there are only a handful of strong acids, for instance, HCl, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, but we don't really need to worry too much about that. I've got some Oreos, got mint Oreos, and then regular Oreos. I've got my Manny's Deli shirt going on now, and I've got my Green Bay Packers cup filled with, uh, with milk to accompany the Oreos. Oreos are vegan. The milk is not, but nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and get cracking on this. All right. So I've got a procedure for y'all. That procedure consists of the following. Screen share, screen share, screen share. There we go. Okay, first and foremost, all submitted pictures have to have photo ID or something of some sort. Um, visible within that image. The first thing that you're going to need to do is go to this chemcollective.org activities auto graded 124. Now I'm going to go ahead and go there. <clears throat> Here's my workbench. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and refresh this so that I get clear everything out. Oh, I got my virtual lab splash screen there. That was pretty exciting. Now here's little description of what's going on. In this activity, you'll use the virtual lab to determine the concentration of a strong monoprotic acid. Monoprotic versus a diprotic or a triprotic. H2SO4, diprotic. H3PO4, three hydrogens, hence triprotic. Okay, we're going to perform this titration with sodium hydroxide and one of my favorite science words of all time, phenylphthalein found in our virtual lab. Phenylphthalein is an indicator solution. Now, the first thing that I want you to do in this is go ahead and test drive that phenylphthalein solution. We'll get to that in a second. The concentration, note, I'm sorry, note the concentration of the acid is between 0.025 molar and 2.5 molar. So you will need to dilute sodium hydroxide solution so that the volume to to reach the end point is between 10 and 50 milliliters. Okay, the important part here for us, <clears throat> for our purposes, is that we do need to dilute it. I'm going to give you guidance and direction on how to dilute that. Um, once you have determined the concentration of the acid, please enter your answer to the form at the bottom of the page. I'm going to scroll down and boom, there it goes. What is the concentration of the acid? Please use three significant figures for your answer. I'm not gonna put an answer in right now because I don't wanna ruin one of my chances. You got three chances to make that submission. Otherwise you gotta start over. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is kind of visualize that phenylphthalein solution. And so, and visualize what it does basically. I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, I've got my screen shared now. I'm looking at my workbench. I'm gonna add my sodium hydroxide solution. I'm gonna add my unknown acid. These are both in 250 mil beakers. And then I'm going to add my phenylphthalein solution. Now to that two or to that 10.0 molar sodium hydroxide solution, I'm adding two milliliters of phenylphthalein. Oh, color change. Now it's kind of purple, magenta-ish. Whenever I think of purple versus magenta, I always think of the movie, uh, The Devil Wears Prada. I'm not sure if anyone's seen that, but there's this very dramatic scene where they talk about colors of clothing, blue versus a cerulean sweater. At any rate, here you go. Now I'm gonna add two milliliters of my phenylphthalein solution, my indicator solution to my unknown acid. Lo and behold, I see no color change. So between an acid, an acidic solution, or a basic solution, okay, we've got our acidic solution, our unknown acid, we added phenylphthalein, we saw no color change, okay? Then we also added phenylphthalein to our buffer, to our sodium hydroxide solution. So 
in an acidic or basic environment, what do you think phenolphthalein is going to do? Or do you think that it's going to detect or you be able to be used as an indicator or a detector of either one of these? Just sort of, uh, you know, think on that for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and clear my workbench because now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of this experiment. And I'm going to go ahead and walk you through basically the whole thing. The reason for that, and the reason I feel comfortable with that, is because, well, this number at the bottom here that I punch in, that's going to be different from yours. Okay, so what I need to do is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add first, as it says in my procedure, I'm going to add my 10 molar sodium hydroxide solution. I was told that I need to dilute that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, what I want to do is I want to get a beaker, and this is a little bit different from when you, you would do a titration in a lab because, well, we can very precisely pour a certain volume in. Um, we're, and with a burette, when you're actually doing a lab, you can you know play with the valve and let a certain volume out. And you can't really illustrate that valve with this. So I'm adding my 250 mil beaker. And it doesn't give me exact guidance on what to dilute to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a one molar dilution or a dilution to one molar. So I'm gonna go ahead and make 200 milliliters of that. So there's a formula for that that you've seen in your lecture. And that formula is either presented if, if I was your, your lecture instructor, I would present it as, just a second, I've got some stylus issues here. I always present it as C1V1 equals C2V2. Some people present it as M1V1 equals M2V2. They mean the exact same thing. Now, concentration one, that's the concentration of my first solution, which I'm going to say is 10 molar. Volume one. Now this volume one is what is the volume that I'm going to take from my first solution to make my second solution? So I don't know that yet. What I do know though is, I'm going to write V1. I do know that, or I have decided that I'm going to make a one molar solution and my total volume of this one molar solution is going to be 200 milliliters. Now, some of y'all can look at this and say, oh, well, I know the answer that, to that. 10, and I'm going to drop my uh, uh, units there. 10 times V is equal to 200. Do the simple math. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. And V is equal to, well, 200 over 10 or 20. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me the exact volume of my 10 molar solution that I need to get to add to my 250 mil beaker. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 20 milliliters. Now, is my work done? No, I'm not. What I need to do now is I need to adjust my volume to 200 milliliters. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my distilled water, my large three liter carboy, and I'm going to add 180 milliliters. So I'll punch that in, pour, done. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and clear up my annotations, get rid of those, because I don't need those anymore. My 10 molar sodium hydroxide solution, I don't need that anymore. My deionized water, I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna put this beaker over here though, and I'm just gonna shuffle it off to the side because that's something I don't really need to worry about too much right now. Okay, so the next thing, so my, my sodium hydroxide, my, my one molar sodium hydroxide solution is ready to use. Now, the next thing that I'm asked to do is to get my unknown acid, three, Erlenmeyer flask, three 250 mil Erlenmeyer flasks, and go back to solutions, my phenolphthalein indicator solution. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up so I can do a grand total of four trials. I'm gonna take my unknown acid, transfer 25 milliliters 
to this first flask. I'm going to move that flask, the one that I've just transferred solution to, down to the bottom. Now I'm going to get 25 milliliters and add it to that 25 milliliters to this. Done. Okay. So now I have a total of four solutions or four containers that have my unknown acid solution. I'm going to add 0 0.5 milliliters of my phenol phthalein to each one of these. So that's going to bring my total volume up to 25.5 milliliters. And that's not a problem, but that's something I want to keep note of because, well, phenol phthalein, I am transferring a volume to this solution. And, you know, just for my own purposes, my own checks and everything like that, if I were to see a beaker that says 25 milliliters rather than that 25.5 and be able to say, oh wait, that flask doesn't have my phenol phthalein solution. But just as a check, this 250 mil flask has 25.5, 25.5, 25.5, 25.5 milliliters. Okay, so all of those flasks have 25 mils of my unknown acid, half a milliliter of my phenol phthalein solution. Just a second. Okay, I'm going to remove my phenol phthalein because I'm done with that. Now what I want to do is position my bench and position my workbench and everything on my workbench so that I can actually use it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm and the benefits of doing this um, uh, through this piece of software is you can very easily control how much of your solution that you're adding. So I'm going to put two milliliters. And every time that I click pour, I'm transferring two milliliters of my sodium hydroxide solution, which has a concentration of what? One molar. I'm going to transfer two milliliters at a time. And as I watch my volume increase, I'm at 33 and a half milliliters, 35 and a half. Okay, so now I've done that five times, so I've transferred a total of 10 milliliters. I'll continue, 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 continue. Nothing's changing, nothing's happening. Oh man, this is, did I do something wrong? I don't think so. No, I didn't. Oh, stop the press. We've got a color change. It's very faint, but it's there. Now, what can you take away from this? Well, you can say, I started with a volume of 25.5 milliliters. My current volume is 59.5 milliliters. The only thing that I added was my one molar, or, yeah, my one molar sodium hydroxide solution. So I added a grand total of 34.0 milliliters. And when I added 34.0 milliliters, I saw a color change, okay? I was adding in two milliliter increments. So what I'm going to take away from this is this is my first trial. I added 34 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide solution. Now what I'm gonna be able to do though, is I'm gonna be able to say, okay, if I add 32 milliliters of my solution, to my second trial, to my second beaker. And I actually move these things around a little bit so there's a little bit more space. If I transfer exactly 32 milliliters to this new unknown acid, should I see a color change? No, I shouldn't, because I know that the last time it took 34 milliliters, unless I, I read something wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead and do 32 milliliters. Lo and behold, no color change. This is good. Because my aim and my goal is to figure out how much sodium hydroxide is required to get that color change. And I want to be as precise as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my 250 mil beaker that has my point or my one molar sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to add, but no longer in two milliliter increments, I'm going to add in 0 0.2 milliliter increments. So I'm becoming more precise. I'm fine tuning to figure out, well, I know between 57 or from 57 milliliters, sorry, 
from 32 milliliters to 34 milliliters, I saw a color change. But was it exactly at 34 milliliters or was it at 33.5? Not exactly sure. I know that it was above 32 and either below 34 or exactly at 34. So I'm going to now adjust this to be adding 0.2 milliliters at a time. Every time I press pour, well, I've transferred. Do it again, 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 again. Okay, so now I'm at 58.5 milliliters, which is the same as 33 milliliters. No color change. Okay. Uh, no. Oh, there we go. All right. So what does this tell me? This tells me that the addition of, that would be 58.9 minus 25.5, because remember 25.5 was my starting volume. And that gets me 33.4 milliliters. So the addition of 33.4 milliliters. So what I did was I fine tuned it a little bit. Can I fine tune it even more? Absolutely, I can. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that, take this one, put it up there, and I'm going to add, remember I was adding in 0.2 mil increments, I'm going to add 33.2 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide solution. I'm going with 33.2 because I know that 33.2 was not so much and 33.4, I have that color change. So maybe it was 33.3 milliliters. I'm trying to find that out. So I'm gonna add 33.2 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide solution. I do not expect to see a color change. It's always a little bit tense, but I don't see that color change. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my sodium hydroxide, but now I'm going to do it in 0.01 milliliter increments. Okay, first one, second third, fourth. You guys can count. Okay, 58.8, that's the same as the addition of 33.3 milliliters. That doesn't get it. 0. 33.31, 0. 0.32, 0. 0.33, 0. 0.34, 0. 0.35, 0. 0.36, ooh, 0.36, okay. So I've narrowed it down now. This one, actually, I'm gonna move this. Now I'm gonna say, well, this one right here, 33.2 milliliters is my kind of starting point. And I deduce that because 33.4 milliliters caused my color change, so I subtracted 0.2 milliliters, which was my volume increment that I was adding. So I'm gonna scribble that out. This one right here, well, this one was 33.36 milliliters, so I'm gonna call that, and that was 0.1 increments, so it's 33.35 milliliters is new starting point. And whenever I say starting point, what I'm meaning is for my next trial, the volume that I wanna start out with. So I'm gonna go back to my mouse. All right, trial number four. I'm gonna go ahead and right off the top, I'm gonna to add 33.35 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide solution. Done, no color change, I'm feeling good about this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add by 0 0.001 milliliters. I'm getting more and more precise with every passing trial. <clears throat> you know, one thing that I'm noticing about this is, well, it kind of looks like I might have actually accidentally missed my my color change because this one looks well it looks more pink than that so if I feel so inclined which I'm gonna 
I gotta try it. I'm gonna go ahead and get one more. This is a little bit extra. You don't have to do this, but I think that this is really my own mistake. I'm gonna use this beaker and I'm going to remove, oh wait, no. I'm going to remove that beaker. I'm gonna get my unknown acid. I'm gonna get another Erlenmeyer. I'm gonna transfer 25 milliliters of my unknown acid to that. I'm gonna get my phenolphthalein. Don't wanna forget that. And I'm gonna add 0.5 milliliters. Okay, so that one's ready to go again. And I'm going to add, I think what I wanna do for a good comparison is I wanna have this unknown acid right next to it so that I can see that kind of color comparison. So I'm gonna start out with 33.35. I'm gonna transfer that volume, no color change. Great. Now, adding 0 0.001. No, no, no. Oh, that's a little bit more pink. It's very subtle. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's a little bit more pink. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little comparison there. Oh, no, I don't wanna dump it in there. It's not as... See, I would, I would argue that this 250 mil flask is a little bit more pink than my unknown acid. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I required, let's see, that's 58. 0.854 milliliters minus 25.500. That's 33.354 milliliters of NaOH was added. Now you might be looking at this and saying, Dr. Gray, did we really have to do all that? And for this, we actually didn't because we had to know the concept, or we're trying to figure out the concentration of our acid, and we only need to go to three significant figures. I've given you five significant figures. But let's go ahead and do the math on this one. We know that when we're going to do a C1, B1 equals C2, B2. So C1, my concentration for my first solution was my one molar sodium hydroxide. That one molar sodium hydroxide solution, I added 25 milliliters of my, of that sodium hydroxide solution to, well, to 33.354 milliliters of acid. Wait, I'm doing it backwards. I had, so, okay, I had, scribble, scribble, scribble. Let's do races there, erase, 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 erase. Okay, let me write this out again. We had uh, 33.354 milliliters of one molar NaOH. We had 25 milliliters of question mark molar acid. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so C1 is going to be one molar sodium hydroxide. V1 is going to be 33.354 milliliters. And that is going to be equal to 25 times well, 25 times, uh, 25 is my volume, and that is going to be C2, okay? So what I'm gonna do is divide each side by 25. I know I'm writing over where I need to be working, but 25, that'd be 33.354, 33.354 divided by 25, I've got 2.2236. So my answer is uh, calculator. There we go. 2.2236. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that into my answer here. 
three significant figures. So I'm going to call that 2.22. Let's see what happens. Check. Uh-oh. We've got two attempts left. OK, I'm not really sure what happened because I just did my calculation again, and it didn't come out of 2.22. So I must have, must have had a typo in there. But instead, my calculation came back at 1.33. So let's try that. So 33.354 divided by 25 gave me 1.33. Check. Yes. What was the concentration of the acid? 1.33 molar. Well done. You did it. OK. So that's everything that you need to do here. What you're doing when you're doing a titration is you're just working to fine tune and very precisely figure out the volume that you're using. When you're in a laboratory setting, you would use an instrument known as a burette. In a burette, you can make these very fine tuned adjustments to this, this valve to open up and let a very small amount of sodium hydroxide or whatever base you're using out at a time. And so then you can get in a position where you can make this sort of very precise calculation. All right. Well, I hope this is helpful. Um, submit all the pictures and everything that you need for this, and you're good to go. All right, everybody. Have a good day. And I still have not stopped my recording, but now I have. Oh, yeah. If you're ever in Chicago and you need a, a, a Reuben or a, a corned beef sandwich that's like as big as a couch, I would recommend Manny's. At any rate, have a good one.